Hold on to your crowns and grab the corgis. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 movies and TV shows about the royals. I understand, sir. To your boy. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've picked the best and most memorable films and TV programs based on the British royal family. My boys make those, they're good, aren't they? Please, make yourself comfortable. Number 10, Victoria and Abdul. Thank you, Mr. Abdul. Abdul Karim. A comedy drama about Queen Victoria and Abdul Karim, this movie centers on the true story of the long-reigning ruler's friendship with her royal servant. A somewhat surprising critical and commercial hit, it also presented Judi Dench with a role she was already used to, after her previous portrayal of Victoria in the 1997 film Mrs. Brown. Victoria and Abdul earned two Oscar nods for makeup and costume design, and some critics even tipped Dench for a Best Actress nomination, although that didn't materialize. But I am anything but insane. Number 9, The Other Berlin Girl. Welcome at court. While this movie is very definitely set in England, its cast is crammed with Hollywood stars. Eric Banner plays the ever unpredictable Henry VIII, Natalie Portman stars as his ill-fated second wife Anne Boleyn, and Scarlett Johansson steps out in the titular role as Anne's sister, Mary. The story itself has been criticised for being heavily fictionalised, especially regarding Mary's role, but as a standalone cinematic experience, the period drama delivers twists, turns, and another stark reminder that this king was not to be messed with. <laughs> Number 8, The White Queen. Have you not had your fill of seeing men go off to war? Well, we should show our support, Richard. If he wins, it will be better for us. And if he loses, no one will remember that we wished him well, and we can soon deny it. Based on the popular book series by renowned writer on the royals, Philippa Gregory, this show doubled up on drama unfolding as the War of the Roses rages on. Following one woman's fight for the throne, Rebecca Ferguson plays the titular character, Elizabeth Woodville, who must stake her claim in a world of growing uncertainty and shifting politics. And Woodville puts up one hell of a battle, despite all the love, loss and heartbreak that's thrown her way. You're of my line, Elizabeth. I knew you had the sight. Number 7, The Tudors. There are a great many things that my king can do. An underrated gem from the archives of British telly, this show, as you'd probably expect, centres on the Tudor period, and mostly on Henry VIII and his relationship with his six wives. Natalie Dormer steals swathes of limelight as Anne Boleyn, and much of the series focuses on the couple's cat and mouse style of courting. But we all know how that romance ended. Other standout performances include Jonathan Rhys Myers as Henry, Henry Cavill as Charles Brandon, and Tamsin Merchant as Catherine Howard. It's a royal court of wonder. Also, some of the maids who attended the Dowager Duchess. Oh, my God. Number six, Elizabeth. How can I force you, Your Grace? I am a woman. <laughs> this film really did strike a chord with the critics, earning Kate Blanchett a Best Actress Oscar nomination for her role as Elizabeth I, and the movie itself was a contender for Best Picture. Focusing on the tough and testing times that Elizabeth faced while getting to grips with her role as a monarch, her task is also plighted by political and social pressures, not least because she's an unmarried woman. There's conflict and fighting before anyone has even left the palace grounds, leaving Blanchett with plenty of material to draw from when she reprised the role in 2007 for Elizabeth the Golden Age. Mary Stuart must die. Where is it written? Who says so? Have I ordered it? Number five, Wolf Hall. Bishop Fisher, Lady Exeter of the Poles. I'll deal with them myself. They are some of the most powerful people in the land. Well then, I'll be on my best behaviour. Another royal drama from the BBC, Wolf Hall was adapted from books by Hilary Mantel, and the action also focuses on the reign of Henry VIII. But Mark Rylance takes centre stage here as Henry's influential advisor, Thomas Cromwell, who rises through the ranks as a royal right-hand man. Taking in some of the UK's most majestic and historic locations, from Pentehurst Place to Berkeley Castle, this six-part series also stars Damien Lewis as the King and Claire Foy as Anne Boleyn, and we'll be seeing her again shortly. I want him frightened. Fright can I make a man, I've seen it happen. Number four, Victoria. He would like to be your private secretary. 
That is out of the question. Offering a career-making role for Jenna Coleman, ITV's Victoria is well known for its critically acclaimed Christmas specials, as well as some elaborate set and costume design. The series charts the early life of the 19th century queen as she ascends to the throne at just 18. Victoria must juggle ruling a country with establishing her own authority, and then there's the added complications caused by her falling in love. It's quite the challenge for someone who is still growing up. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Lord M. Number three, the King's Speech. Simple mechanics. That's all we ask. Oh, well, that's about a shilling's worth. Forget about the blessed shilling! Heading back to Between the Wars, our third place pick looks at the life of King George VI and his impromptu rise to the throne. Played by Colin Firth, George was expected to lead an entire nation after his brother abdicated, but he found the task was hampered by a very personal struggle. The King was known for his lifelong speech impediment, and the King's speech focuses on his treatment of it with an eccentric speech therapist. Anyone who can shout vowels at an open window can learn to deliver a speech. Firth famously won an Oscar for his performance, and the film's famous final scenes are firmly locked in movie history. With God's help, we shall prevail. Number two, The Crown. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish and to obey. Obey? She insisted. At the time of filming, this was one of the most expensive Netflix shows ever made. And it's pretty easy to see why. Featuring famously beautiful locations, an inventive visual style, and a stellar cast of acting talent, fronted by Claire Foy and Matt Smith, the crown seems to be worth every penny. With Foy playing Elizabeth II and Smith as her husband Prince Philip, the binge-worthy series hooks us into the life of Britain's reigning monarch, also offering well-pitched portrayals of Princess Margaret, the Queen Mother, and a host of top politicians. It gets everyone addicted to the pomp, circumstance, and scandal. If you must. Well, I must. Number one, the Queen. One in four are now in favour of abolishing the monarchy altogether. Helen Mirren's celebrated career is packed with pristine performances, but nothing beats this award-winning turn as Elizabeth II. The film shows the royal family in the wake of Princess Diana's death, portraying their struggle over which aspects of the matter should be public and private. The Queen acts as an anchor amidst the uproar, with Mirren reflecting the responsibility, expectation, and emotional balance that the monarch must manage. Ultimately, the actual Queen gave her seal of approval by inviting the actress to visit Buckingham Palace after the film's release. After all, Helen had already proven that she was comfortable around corgis. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.